Bob Weiner. Close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Who is the chief marketing officer of TigerFitness.com um, and owner and CEO of uh, two fast-growing supplement companies, Ethic Tech Nutrition, MTS Nutrition. He's also a professional bodybuilder and vice president of American Natural American Natural Bodybuilding Federation. Uh, so we're going to start with Joel. Here, present about the three best ideas I ever had. And my career spans a little bit. I've started companies. Um, the climate's changed. We didn't have social media when I started my first company. That came in midway through my tenure there. So what I'm going to talk about now are the three ideas I can think of that could be my best ideas. They might not be my best ideas, but let's just, for the sake of this PowerPoint, let's just use them as our best ideas. I'm just, I'm just as good as my man over here working this thing, obviously. <laughs> He's gonna I got broke. <laughs> Alright. You guys got technical IT help? Oh, that, wait, wait. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> the, the IT guys are having issues. Okay, forget about this. The first slide's about who am I? Okay, first of all, I am CEO of MTS Nutrition to support nutrition company. Secondly, I am CMO, for those of you who don't know, Chief Marketing Officer of TigerFitness.com. Third, I have a couple other things going on. I'm a pro bodybuilder. Most of all, I'm a husband and a father of three, which, you know, obviously I take somewhat seriously because that's, that's important stuff. That's why you work, right? To provide for them. So, moving on, we're just going to forget the PowerPoint existed. I put in pretty pictures. I'm a little bit disappointed. <laughs> but how many people here, um, how many people here own their own business? Anybody? Show you guys don't clap? Cut out of your Okay, we're gonna get hype up in here, alright? Okay, how many people want to start their own business if you don't have anybody? No, nobody wants to start their own business, good. It's a bad choice. <laughs> bad, bad choice. Alright, here's the deal. The number one thing, number one thing I believe you need to look at is positioning and differentiating your company by coming out with a category rather than just a product. I'm gonna explain why. Now you come up with a product, there's only so ways you can differentiate a Me Too product. Y'all gotta give it up. I have no cheat sheets like these guys over here. This is all right here. Thank you. Okay, see. So, nice, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so here's the deal. Um, when you create a product, what ways are you gonna differentiate? How are you different from your competitor? What makes you special? In the sea of all these wonderful things to buy, thousands and thousands of products, on TigerFitness.com alone, we carry over 10,000 products, 10,000. So you have five. How are you going to differentiate those five products against those? And the key is to create a category and not to simply create a product. How do you create a category? You find something that hasn't been done. I'm gonna give you an example. Back in 2005, I created a product. I was CEO of a company that created a product called Extend. Not the penis enlargement. <laughs> for the record, it was an intro workout product. Let me explain that for you. What we did is we looked at the atmosphere of the industry. Pre-workout, you take anybody here work? Does anybody even lift in here? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Much props. Much props. All right. There was pre-workouts. You know that stuff you take to give you energy and give you that feeling before you train. Okay? Post, oh my god! Okay, we got it. Thank you, IT. Everybody, round of applause for IT. <laughs> IT up in the house. All right. So there was pre-workout, post-workout, stuff you take after training. The logical step is to take something during training, right? So we created an intra-workout product, which is taken during training to address your nutrition needs during training. Now think about it. We're not the first to do this. When you think of something, you think, I want something during training, you're thinking it was first to market, first to market. Kleenex and tissues, Xerox and copiers. You need that memorable differenti differentiating position. Coke versus Pepsi. Coke is still beating the hell out of Pepsi, right? All right, so even though I prefer Pepsi Max, I, I like Pepsi Max. So what you gotta do is create that. Now what we've done in the future, see I already passed that one. What we've done now, since there's only so many times you can subcategorize, for example, mass gainers. Mass gainers are carbs and protein. Okay, what we did is we made the carb source brown rice, which bodybuilders, chicken and rice, that's what bodybuilders eat, right? And then vegetables. We don't want, you don't look good in the coffin, so you need to, you know, take some vegetables, be healthy. 
So we added those in, so it differentiated us, created a subcategory of the mass gainer market. Hence, we own that market. So it gives us, while not a complete category like intra workout, is still better than being a me too, and it helps differentiate from the crowd. This is another one. Mine are a bit more specific to industry, to starting a product, to starting a brand, um, which is why I thought it went great when you guys had me spoke first, because you guys were much really good applicable broad. And I just wanted to go, okay, here's, now you have the product. Here's what you're gonna do, right? Build an autonomous brand within a retail outlet to create exclusivity and trust. I remember I was talking to a guy on the website after I sold my company. He's like, I wanna kind of create a brand and call it, let's say, muscles.com. Okay, I wanna create muscles protein. I'm like, no, no one's gonna buy it. Why? They trust us as a brand. No, they trust you as a retailer. They do not trust you as a manufacturer. You can't own two positions in one mind. The mind share is only so big. So what we did, and we're not the first. You guys go to Costco, you got Kirkland. You go to Walmart, you got Equate. You go to uh, Sam's Club, you got Members Mark. Again, they trust the store, not the brand. Even though they know Kirkland's owned by Costco, they're still not gonna wanna buy Costco brand cashew clusters. They want that good stuff, they want that Kirkland. So, what we did is we built MTS Nutrition within Tiger Fitness. One reason is I had to circumvent a non-compete, we won't talk about that. Two, two, is that the consumer trusted the brand. We built that brand autonomously. We built that brand exclusively, so the brand had legs. So what happened when the non-compete was over, now you can buy an MTS Nutrition at any of your favorite neighborhood stores. Because it's not, who's gonna buy Tiger Fitness Protein from Vitamin Shop? I, that would confuse the hell out of me, right? But you would buy MTS Nutrition from the Vitamin Shop, because it's an autonomous brand. Even though it's my face on both of them, it's still a different brand. That's called you know, basically owning two spots in the consumer's mind, the retail store as well as the brand. If there's anybody in the sport nutrition industry, please leave. I don't want you stealing this stuff. This is valuable. <laughs> Number three is the most important thing, and I believe it was touched on before, is your employees about the lady who sent the package. We have similar stories. Build careers, don't just employ. I don't want a nine to five guy. It's not what I want. I want someone who wants, I want someone who wants my job. I want someone who wants to be the CEO. I want every employee to want to be the CEO. Everyone in our company starts in shipping, with one or two exceptions. Exceptions, obviously, you know, you don't get an accounting degree and become a CFO in shipping. You need to know some stuff, okay? I understand there's certain um, exceptions to the rule. However, when you start and you move your way up, you build that company morale, that company pride, and that's something that we instill within our employees, the morale, the culture. Everyone can do everything. Black Friday, our sales went up tremendously. Hell, the front office changed, put on some gym shorts, put on some sneakers, took off the nice clothes. They were in the back shipping because they knew exactly what to do. Everyone can do everything. But again, like I want to state, if someone just wants a job, it's not what you want in your company. You want someone who wants a career. You want someone like that guy in the corner of this slide. You see that? That's Birdman. He's got Tiger Fitness across his back, a TF on his thigh, and an M on his calf. That, that is a company that will preach the message. And if your company, if your employees are happy, if your employees are happy, they will, that will trickle down to the customer, and they will be happy customers, and they will be there for you as well. It used to be 10 times more to get a new customer than keep an old one. It costs a lot more then, because that stat was when I was in college. And I'm getting old. So let's just say that a long, long time ago, it was 10 times. It's gotta be more. Promote from within. I'm a big fan, like I said before, of moving up in the company. How would you feel if you were making, I don't know, let's just throw out a number, 40 grand a year, and you're working with, really fighting for the company five years into it, we hire someone for 100K above you. You don't even know him. And you don't have a chance at that job. We do everything we can to make the employee to make sure that they are taken care of and they know that we have their best interest in mind for their future. Again, it builds morale. That's it, and lucky I'm last because I had this slide in there. So <laughs> here we go, guys. Thank you so much for coming and watching all the three of us. Guys, that was terrific.